Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 177. Before I get into this week's review, as always, if you haven't already, you should definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button and help me reach my goal for 2022 of hitting 5,000 subscribers. I'd also like to try and hit 100 likes on this video, so be sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's get right into this week's review. We got a very good chapter this week. Very good chapter primarily a combat chapter and one with some pretty crazy stuff in it and you know usually when that's the case it's a pretty goddamn good combat chapter and uh it is this fight with utah versus the sendai colony players has been really really good the chapter where he fought kurorushi was very good uh, the chapter after that, where we got to see Uro's sky warping technique, was very cool as well. Uh, and then got to see some of Ryu's Granite Blast. Um, and then getting to see that again in this chapter, but a little more in depth. This one is much more Ryu focused than it is Uro focused. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool to see. Ryu is a very interesting guy. And by interesting, I mean very entertaining. This dude is totally some kind of Toriko. Big Toriko vibes from this man. Extremely chadly powerful dude with a pompadour who talks about eating all the time. Does that ring any bells for you Toriko fans? Probably ring a few because there are actually a couple characters with pompadours in Toriko. But, you know. The guy keeps talking about how he is never satisfied with what he's eaten, his meals. Uh, and by meals, of course, I mean fights. People that are able to satisfy his hunger for battle. Um, and his perspective on it is very interesting. First off, apparently the guy with the pompadour is an ancient sorcerer. I would not have seen that coming. I guess he was a little ahead of the times. Uh, very fashion forward in terms of his hairstyle. Um, but throughout his life, he only ever ate in moderation. Um, you know, everything that he experienced and did was satisfactory. And as such, there was no reason to be unsatisfied with things. Fought staunch men, met good women. If someone asked him if he had any regrets, he'd probably say no. However, he still has this sort of vague feeling of hunger in his stomach that there's still something missing that he hasn't been able to taste, to devour. And what it seems like that is, is a real genuine challenge. He is unsatisfied because he's never been full. He's only been sated. So ideally for him, getting to have a fight against someone as powerful as Yuta is finally a chance for him to fill his appetite, to be filled to his heart's content, or Stomach's content. It's more of a metaphorical hunger, so more of heart's content. Um, and they get into a bit of a clash. It's a pretty good clash, and we get some pretty insane shit as the two of them basically try, like, doing a shoulder barge into each other, and Ryu actually comes out on top of this clash by a lot. I don't think Yuta is exactly holding back in terms of his cursed energy here. He doesn't have Rika. But he's trying to kill these guys. He's trying to kill Ryu and Uro. He wants to stop them from hurting the civilians, and he wants their points. Um, or, well, you know, he wants to get points from them. The rule change hasn't been made yet at this point. Um, so I don't think Yuta's exactly holding back when fighting Ryu here. Um, and he still loses quite severely in this clash of cursed energy. He gets hurt pretty badly and flung off of the building they're fighting on top of. And that's kind of nuts, because as we know, Yuta seems to have the highest amount of cursed energy of any character in the series, even more than Gojo. Um, so the idea that he could lose in an output battle is fucking ridiculous. We, we do understand now, of course, that overall amount and output are not the same thing. Uh, you can have a lot of cursed energy, but only be able to use a little bit of it at a time. Um, or not really have that much and be able to expel, like, all of it in one go. Uh, so it seems like in Ryu's case, his ability to expend cursed energy, like, in one go 
actually surpasses Utah by himself, which is fucking ridiculous. Uh, I would say in terms of like sheer raw power, Ryu is probably the strongest new player we've been introduced to thus far. That we've, that we've had a fully fledged introduction to. Uh, Higuruma has hacks abilities from Judgment, and we don't know what the deal is with Kashimo yet. Exactly, we, we're pretty sure it's some kind of lightning technique, and it seems like Kashimo is probably the strongest of the sorcerers that we're going to see fights against. Um, so we still have them, but like. Ryu may be the strongest one we've seen thus far, so, you know, of course, that's why he's in the fight against Yuta right here. Um, yeah, his his output is kind of on another level. It, it is actually, it does indeed live up to the hype. Now, I would say that probably makes him not necessarily the strongest of the Sendai Colony members, but probably the second strongest. It seemed based on points that Drove was the strongest. However, I do have a theory on that. Uh, because as we know, Utah basically one or two shot at Drove. It looked like Drove had been cut in more than one spot. So, got like no diff by Utah. U U Utah just showed up and killed Drove pretty much. There may have been like some kind of struggle there, but the dude got fucked. He didn't do anything to Utah. Um, and I think the reason for that is something that we have not really talked about or focused on in quite some time. And that's that Drift is a Shikigami user, or was a Shikigami user, the dude's dead now. Um, and Shikigami users in general are not very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Megumi, as it has been stated a few times, and Ghetto as well, uh, are exceptions to the rule most shikigami users just rely entirely on their summons and don't bother at all with learning martial arts or some sort of close combat techniques because they just assume that their shikigami will take care of everything and it seems like that might have been the case with drew because his shikigami sounded busted as shit so he probably never thought there was any real need for him to get good at martial arts or fighting someone up close whereas yuta is a swordsman we, like, we see him fighting up close with people all the time. Rika is more of a supplemental thing. He uses Rika for when things get kind of bad. Um, but Yuta's very good at fighting people up close. So, naturally, Drove... Later. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, whereas Ryu is not only extremely powerful at long range, but is able to use his cursed energy output in melee combat, which... Is very useful and impressive, I have to say. That, that's pretty good. That, Ryu's, he's pretty strong. I'm, I'm going to have to give it to him. Uh, I don't know if Ryu's going to shake up any of the top 10 rankings. Probably not. Because uh, I still put hack stuff in general. Maybe put hack stuff over um, sheer raw power. Like, Higuruma would just shut down Ryu. It's like, take away Ryu's cursed energy usage. And he's probably kind of fucked. Because there's not much complex about what he does, you know. Um, well, no, actually, if Granite Blast is his actual technique and he still has his output, he could probably still beat Higuruma, if we're being honest here. Um, so, maybe, I don't know. Um, but then Uro gets back involved in the fight and she starts doing her sky manipulation shit uh, after Yuta gets into another clash with Ryu, trying to smash him into the ground uh, as... He's letting off another Granite Blast, um, and Yuta gets blown back again. He lost again in a battle of Cursed Energy output. Ryu's, Ryu may be the man when it comes to output. I Gojo's probably above him in terms of output, uh, because things like Hollow Purple are just fucking ridiculous. Um, but Yuta lost in this clash here. Um, and let me just say, thank God he has reverse curse technique, uh, because the hand he used to try and stop Granite Blast, to try and overcome Granite Blast, got fucked up. That hand got fucked up. Uh, so then Uro comes up behind Yuta and hits him with something called Thin Ice Missile, um, which seems to, I guess, just mess with space in such a way to send someone flying. It's like cracking ice. Um... He gets messed up again. Uh, Ryu tries to go after Uro for interrupting his fight, 
and she just bends his blast around her and sends it back at him. So, as she's stated, she can't use her technique for direct offense, but she can use it very, very well for landing counters, even ones against extremely powerful curse attacks. So the time finally comes at the end of this chapter, and Yuta is healing up his hand, which, you know, is not an issue. He's got reverse curse technique. Um, and somehow, at least Ryu is under the impression that they have seen the limits of Yuta's cursed energy. Famous last words, quite possibly the dumbest statement of any character in this series. Ah, after fighting you for like, I don't know, five minutes, we've finally seen the bottom of your cursed energy, guy whose whole shtick is having nigh infinite amounts of cursed energy. Right, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, Uro may surpass Yuta in terms of fuckery with space, hacked stuff, though you could still say that technique copying is more hacks. But, you know, fighting against someone who can warp the space around them so that you can't really hit him is pretty difficult to deal with. And Ryu's output is actually higher than Yuta's. So, you know, they're tough opponents to be going up against, especially when you're going up against both of them at the same time. One you can't really hit, and one who hits harder than you. So he's in a bit of a rough position. Um, he knows that Ryu doesn't target civilians, but he doesn't really care if anything happens to them. He doesn't give a shit about collateral damage. So he's, he's not thinking about where he's aiming. And considering the amount of points she has, Uro only fights sorcerers because of her pride. Um, but regardless, there's still the need to beat these two. So as long as the both of them don't pose a particularly high threat to the civilians, but still pose some of them, mostly on Ryu's part, taking them out takes priority over defending the civilians in their immediate vicinity. So it's time for Rika to come out. All of her. All of her shall emerge. As Yuta puts on his ring, and we get this pretty sick-ass panel of him at the uh, end of the chapter being kind of shaded with an all-black background. Looking fierce, looking very good. So I'm thinking if it's time for Rika to finally fully manifest once again, I think it may be time for us to get some kind of explanation as to what's the deal with her now. Is it still Rika? Is it a copy of Rika? Rika is returned in some way, maybe? Does the summoning function work differently in that Rika is not constantly surrounding Yuta like she was before, and now she's just off somewhere and he just summons her from there? Um, because he's able to partially summon her at will now, it seems. Uh, so that's why he specifies, come, Rika, all of you. Um, so the fight was fun. The, the fight was really fun. It, it was good to see some new characters with new powers show off. But now it's, it's time. All good things must come to an end. And it's not going to be very good for them anymore, starting next chapter. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I imagine, like, Rika comes out to play. This shit is probably going on for, like, two chapters after this. Rika comes out next chapter. The obvious series of events following that occurs. And then we get another chapter after that to wrap that up and then add some kind of finishing touches for the Sendai Colony stuff. Uh, probably establish whatever Yuta is going to be doing after this. And then we move on to something else, probably Hagari in Tokyo Colony number two. So that's my current prediction for how things play out, but who knows, maybe another wild card will come into play. Um, depending on when the rule change ends up happening in relation to this, there could arise a possibility in which Ryu or Uro are like, hey, I will stop fighting. Please don't kill me. I will just give you like all of my points. I'll just give you them. Or, you know, almost all of them. Um, would Yuta spare them? Maybe? Yuta's not particularly bloodthirsty, but he's the type of guy that doesn't fuck around when it comes to taking care of business. So, 
in his mind, it may just be, uh, I don't believe you. You're clearly lying. You're full of shit. You're still a risk to civilians. Bye. Uh, that could still happen, even if they offer to surrender in some way. Um, but we'll just have to see. We'll have to see if this is it or if some other players are going to get involved in some way, shape, or form. But with that, that's all I've got to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reactions and reviews every week that we get a new chapter. If you enjoyed discussing Jujutsu Kaisen with other people or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. And since it's the end of the video, I might as well give a shout out to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Archbear CJ2K, Neo, Dijon Redden, Honey Mustard, K God, Chris Redfield, Rat, Ryzen 4K, Artist, Mac Campaign, Wave of Manga, Chuck Speed and Seed, Jake Stir Easy, Play Free Labs, Kanichi Kaneda, Strawbones, and Neverest. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at some point during videos or access to reviews for One Piece and The Boxer, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.